Hello and welcome to News Click. The G20 summit is slated for later this week on the 9th and 10th of September 2023. The press is breathless in the coverage of this forthcoming event and the Indian government has gone all out with claiming the uh, presidentship this year as a feather in its cap. But what can developing countries including India expect from the G20? What is the background to this grouping? And how does it relate to what other groupings, including from the Global South, are doing today? We're going to discuss these all-important issues with Dr. Biswajit Dhar, the noted economist and a specialist in trade policy. Dr. Dhar, thanks very much for joining us. You know, I want to begin asking you about this G20 su summit from a perspective which is widely being circulated. It's being said that this is uh, going to respond to the priorities of the Global South and that it will be based on an inclusive and balanced international agenda. In the discussions that we've seen in the run-up to this meeting later this week, are you seeing either of these things get reflected? Well, let me, let me pick up three areas through which I'm going to be reflecting on the question that you asked me. And then I'll, I'll leave it to you and the viewers to pick up their mind uh, whether what is being talked about is being realized or, yes. or, or could be realized yeah, moving, moving forward. So three areas I'll, I'll pick up uh, are all, uh, you know, sort of related to the, uh, um, uh, the global economy in a very broad sense. Uh, the first is uh, the whole issue of climate change. It's of course intimately ring, linked to the uh, you know, our uh, economic well-being and the global economy. The second issue is uh, the question of uh, uh, developing country uh, debt, indebtedness, which has been hanging for a long time. And now it is especially the debt of low-income countries. And, and the third issue is the uh, question of reforming the multilateral development banks. And, and these are uh, the financial institutions beyond uh, the Washington-based the, the Bret Bretton Woods institutions. There are also ADB, the region, regional development banks. So um, there's been a, um, a discussion on reforming these agencies and make them more development oriented. So I'm going to just reflect on these three. Uh, so first on climate change. Now, I think uh, it's very clear to anyone, you know, experiencing the, uh, the problems of uh, you know, sort of variable weather and uh, very uncertain weather con climate climatic con conditions. Uh, that uh, climate change is something that should have been done, may maybe you know, a, a, a few days back, not in, not even today. Uh, and uh, the and and what we are seeing here is the this big battle going on between the developed and the developing countries on the question of uh, uh, first uh, the net zero when it is going to be uh, right. achieved uh, and and the, and the second is how it is to be achieved and and the how is largely um, being discussed in the context of climate finance yes yeah so uh, uh, you know the the west wants us to do uh, the whole net zero or meet the net zero target asap by by 2050, that that is what they talk about. India, of course, has uh, said no. We we have asked for more time. But in the middle of all this, I think uh, what is not being discussed is that the framework uh, is uh, was really that countries are going to do you know do the mitig mitigation adaptation according to their ability. So there right. was this common but differentiated responsibility, right. both in terms of how much you will do and, you know, and, and of course, common but differentiated responsibility also on the basis of whether there are enabling uh, con uh, conditions. And that's, the, that's why the climate finance issue comes in. Okay. Now, um, I think, I think uh, there was a need to actually do a comprehensive review of of the entire, uh, you know, uh, uh, this landscape. Uh, who who can do uh, how much? Because it's very important. Because there are um, 
it's not uh, uh, the climate change is not something that you know if you just think that a few countries are going to do it uh, the problem of climate change is going to go away okay yeah so the the, the trans boundary implications of um, of of carbon uh, you know the the uh, of the carbon, carbon footprint in different countries makes it imperative that everyone is on the same page yeah and therefore enabling all the countries to be on the same page is the responsibility of the global community okay so uh, uh, now climate finance and we this is uh, the most disappointing story it has not been forthcoming yeah now uh, it wasn't forthcoming before the pandemic right yeah and uh, and after the pandemic it it's become uh, a kind of a mirage i would say because uh, the developed countries are now busy putting their house in order you no know, so the kind of the kind of pump priming that the americans did and uh, the biden administration did and onward you know uh, it's the kind of uh, funds it's pumping in uh, to support an industrial policy because it it wants to uh, you know sort of decouple from china you yeah. uh, know that's a big question mark of course but so what has happened is that the the big guys and same thing is happening in europe they are also uh, doing a, 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 a or, you know in a, in a similar project so availability of finance is going to be a problem that's what i uh, can I, i can see so somewhere i think there has to be a discussion in the g20 as to who's going to bear the burden of financing in the global community to get get on to this cub you know sort of uh, to meet the net zero target you know uh, reasonably quickly so that's not something that you know the indian presidency is going to be uh, able to um, uh, come to terms with why do you say so no that's the reason that i said that you know even before the pandemic there wasn't much funds uh, coming Europe. coming 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 uh, right. forthcoming and now with uh, these guys putting in money in their own economies mm -hmm. and and you know sort of trying to deglobalize in 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 uh, you know if i if i may use that term. so so this is this is what is happening so the there's going to be further pressure on uh, you know uh so there was a need to take a realistic view as to how this is going to be done uh, and uh, there are uh, a number of uh, uh, factors that come in like for instance this whole issue of uh, of trying to um, uh, set their their own agenda of of of, of deglobalization at, at a at a very critical juncture um is also something that that feeds into the soul uh, uh, climate climate issue because like i said that the kind of money that you and us are pumping in uh, will certainly have an implication on the availability of finance uh, for right. climate the second issue that uh, you know we have not been discussing at all um, seriously is a question of technology yeah and um, uh, there had to be a consensus on availability of technology of critical technologies uh, we saw how the west just looked the other way during covid pandemic yeah uh, the developing countries kept insisting that the stranglehold of ipr should be uh, should be removed right. in order to uh, order, order or in order that the developing countries can act, get access to these technologies you know the vaccine and you know the medicines uh it wasn't done so at the worst in the worst kind of a pandemic that uh, modern modern man has seen we didn't see any response on the technology front from the advanced countries and on on climate this has been a long story yeah uh somewhere uh, you know down the line uh the focus went off from this uh, technology aspect and almost entirely yeah and shifted entirely to the domain of finance on 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 the only on finance yeah uh, and, and 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 that that was another i think a big mistake that the uh, the developing countries did india in particular india was a very strong uh, advocate of technology transfer 
Of course, I would I would hasten to say that even this term technology transfer is not really an appropriate term because technologies are never transferred. These are bought and sold in the marketplace. And and how and, and the terms on which you will be able to get the technology is the critical, uh, you know, um, uh, critical element. And on, on, on this particular aspect, then there had to be a global consensus, you know, and uh, forums like G20 right. are, are the ones where this kind of, uh, you know, uh, a decision uh, should have been taken. Yeah. And uh, mm, um, this is something that we were actually hoping that would ha happen when the G G20 was upgraded from a finance minister's platform to a summit level meeting of these countries, of, um, of uh, member countries. And G7 brought in a bunch of emerging economies uh, um, uh, in order to, well, the immediate trigger was uh, uh, to find a response to the economic downturn of 2008. So the first summit was held in 2008 and then it started hap hap happening every year. And the question that we are, we've been asking all the time is, that what is the point of the developing countries being on the high table if issues that are of critical importance to these countries are not raised in the manner that, sh that they should be, should, should be done? So apart from the technology transfer and the negotiations on climate change, which you say have not gone in favor of the, uh, you know, what's now, everyone says the global south, the developing right. countries. Um, what are the other aspects that you think yeah. So the so that like so the second second issue that I'm going to raise is the question of external debt of developing countries. Now, the 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 first major debt crisis of the developing countries happened in the 1980s. Right. Yeah. And and there was no resolution. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, worth talking about from a developing country perspective. All that happened was that the uh, the the, uh, the American administration, together with the IMF and the World Bank, were able to find a way. They actually, what you, the term that you use that we have been using is the model through, mm. provided additional funding to these countries, the indebted countries, in order that they do not default on their debt. So, so all the 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 the, the consideration was that. There should not. There shouldn't be a crisis that the financial market faces. That's right. Yeah. So the rescue. Uh, the, so what? What? What was? What was done was the rescue of the financial market. Uh, the big banks. The two. The banks. They were too big to fail. Yeah. And all these investment banks like J.P. Morgan and others, and uh, and the developing countries were left to their own fate. Yeah. Uh, and and then came the structural adjustment program, and then the entire burden of adjustment was on the developing countries. Yeah, you're and actually telling us about the history of the G20. That is right. You know yeah. how from the G7 exactly you added these countries which you thought were uh, economically uh, progressing, and you thought it would be advantageous to have them all, and and that is what the G20 is. That's right. Oh, but I'm what I was telling telling you is that look, uh, the debt crisis uh, has a as a history. And it's never, never been resolved. Yeah. So, when you fast forward and then come to the COVID pandemic, and that's where the uh, direct role of G20 can be seen. In the wake of the G20 of the pan pandemic, the G20 took a decision that the uh, the debt servicing problems of low-income countries, and there were six, there were initially 73 countries, and then 69 countries, which had really serious uh, debt overhang, very large debt burden, their debt servicing problems will be reduced. It's not as if there will be some write-offs. Right. The only thing that was being discussed was that, you know, they had to repay the debt. Uh, they had to, you know, service their debt, pay the interest and, uh, and, and the principal. That uh, will be waived for a period of time. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and G20 just, just talked about this. Now, what also was discussed, uh, was, was on the table, was not the entire debt stock. Because the debt 
uh, you know, that these countries had accumulated had three sources. First is uh, bilateral, uh, you know, debt, bilateral loans that were given from, you know, it was government to government kind of loans. Uh, the second is uh, private sector lending uh, and, and the third is uh, the lending uh, by the multilateral development banks like, right. I, like I mentioned on the World Bank, uh, IMF and the regional development banks. So there are three components. So what did the G20 decide? They said the, the debt uh, servicing obligations of these countries that they owe to the official uh, uh, creditors. Huh? Uh, that means the, the governments. Mm -hmm. Only that will be, that component of debt, debt servicing will be postponed. Yeah? So it will be suspended. So they, it was called the Debt Service Suspension Initiative, DSSI. DSSI. Yeah? Yes. So, so this is, so, so now, what is the problem with this? Now, the problem with this thing is, like I said, that there are these three sources. The, the, one of the smallest for many countries is the official, uh, you know, the creditors. Right. Hmm. The largest, in most cases, is the private creditors, and they are not touched. And yeah. this is the component which you actually highlight in a paper that you wrote, uh, that published in the India Forum, that it's gone up from $14 billion in the 2010s to a decade later about 83 billion dollars. That is right. So, so look at the extent to which private lending has increased to these countries. And, and so something had to be seriously done in order to decrease the debt. If you, something is seriously done, then you have to decrease the debt that, that these countries owe to the private creditors. Right. Yeah. So there has to be a write-off. Uh, now that is not on the table. It was not been discussed at all. Okay. Will the G20 become a forum this time to discuss this? No, the G20 has been discussing this from 2020. The private aspect of the No, no. 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 I'm saying that the overall thing has been discussed. Right. Even now, the G20 is only saying the G, the private creditors are, in, are invited to, you know, support this initiative on, you know, uh, but there is no binding. Uh, commitment, uh, you know, there is no binding commitment. There is no, is no they, they don't have to take a binding commitment. In other yeah. words, there is no reason why they should feel encouraged to come on board this initiative at all and say that okay. No, they are not. You know, because see, they uh, so there is no. Uh, they don't. You know, if we, the, the one thing that we understand the way the global, you know, these these these. Uh, the, um, uh, these processes are functioning that unless there is a proper commitment right um, which is brought on a particular set of uh, uh, you know agencies uh, they don't actually budge an inch uh, uh, but you know the situation is that even if there are commitments they will still not budge but the first thing that you need to do is to bring certain amount of commitments on them but that is not happening and the reasons are quite obvious the reasons are that you know, the developed countries will be extremely wary to touch the private creditors. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's the nature of the political economy. Because, you know, they have always been supporting these big, big uh, financial institutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and um, whenever there has been a crisis, these financial institutions have been given, given big uh, assistance by the government. And all in the name of too big to fail. Right. Yeah. So when this is the reality, then you can't expect anything to happen to the uh, the, the poor countries uh, getting any kind of uh, relief from the private creditors. Now, why is this external debt issue more important for the, the these countries, you know, income countries? First is that you know if you have this burden of debt, now you can see the parallel from any uh, any you know sort of a house uh, an, an individual household. That if person, if a family owns huge debt, then the that the 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 this this uh, family's future uh, looks uh, completely in the dark. You know, sort of they they'll feel uh, they, they 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 won't have a proper proper pro proper future. So for these countries, which are now have to implement things like what I was discussing earlier, the 
uh, the climate climate uh, climate change right. commitments you know global you know sort of uh, um, reducing the carbon footprint so now they, they are in a situation that if they take any additional funding from any of and from anywhere um, they just can't sustain it they just col- completely collapse the only thing only option that that they will be left uh, that will be left before them would would to declare insolvency that we just can't they throw up their hands and say we can't do anything about it but unlike a lot of the uh, uh, private sector companies the big ones who declare on insolvency and then they get support from the government and then they uh, they, they 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 get back, they get back back on track for the for the governments it's, it can be very difficult the situation yeah so uh, apart from their development uh, imperative their future uh um, uh you know anything else these countries want to do will be directly uh, in, 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 you know impinging on their debt liabilities that, that they're carrying forward right you know i wanted to take you back also to another aspect you mentioned in your in the same paper you you mentioned the montreal meeting in 2000 again of the g20 where they said where they actually spoke about the benefits of globalization and integration of economies so this doesn't sound like the agenda for the global south no, that no. as people understand it yet this is still the agenda for the g20 meeting so so in a sense so so in a sense the g7 does not engage with the agenda of the global south but it speaks about the global south it's just words is it no absolutely you know the first thing that you need to understand and this is what i've been trying to uh, talk about is that g20 and this question that we had been asking initially that uh, uh, what is the point of the developing countries being on the high table is are their uh, voices heard or are their what is their agenda is it discussed in the in the g20 right they are not uh, uh, because uh, what you can see that systematically the g20 has been driven by the g7 yeah uh, so uh, i i i i use the term term you know the g g7 is basic uh, g20 has been uh, the, the, it's gone through a process of g7ization yeah okay. so all these uh, agenda of the north sort of comes here and 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 nothing of the south is actually discussed and and you can see this uh, the third aspect that i wanted to talk about is the reform of the multilateral development banks right yeah now we all know that the imf and the world bank are sitting on the laps of the us yeah and and uh, it can't take a decision um, other than what the americans want because of the voting uh, shares yeah uh, now us has uh, you know this um, ownership or sorry share holding of us is 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 in excess of 16% and for any critical decision to be taken by the imf for instance you need a super majority of 85% so so no decision can be taken without the us com- right. coming on board and there's been a discussion going on for a long time and india and china have been pressing for this that the the uh, the fund and the bank should reflect the real, the today's reality and uh, the emerging economies economic uh, you know sort of uh, presence should also be reflected in the voting shares the current voting shares of the imf now that's not happened yeah right. so so the whole ish, the the whole framework from right, starting from the multilateral bank development banks which are uh uh we've always been uh, adopting policies that have not favored the developing countries like i mentioned earlier the structural adjustment right. loans okay. were brought in right yeah and 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 then um, uh, going forward the kind of relief if if at all has that has to be given to the low income countries that can't be decided without the americans coming on board and they are not, not they are not willing to do that so so we, so basically the the g20 has got caught in this web that has been created by the g7 yeah and they they are they are moving us exactly the in the way they want it in the direction that they want yeah um, and i just like to mention one final point and one one final issue which is on the uh, 
multilateral trading system. Right. Yeah. See, so the multilateral trading system is completely broken, and we thought that uh, G7, uh, G G20 would do something. And India has been talking about its uh, support for the multilateral trading system, and the fact that the dispute settlement body of the WTO, WTO is broken. Right. And because of the the Americans. You know, many of us were hoping that at least this issue is discussed seriously and, and a way is found out, out of this log jam. And at least the pressure of the 18 other countries, you know, uh, will be put on the, the Americans to, to change their, uh, their, their position. There has been no evidence of that. Yeah. But again, you know, the news reports, even in India, they keep talking about how India is resolving various disputes, even with the United States on its own. Oh, they've decided this on the TRIPS issue, uh, on a patents issue, or even I think the sugar dispute is still pending. So this perception is being created that the countries are resolving their problems on their own and the w while the WTO dispute settlement mechanism is sort of in abeyance. Is that really possible? No, no, it's a very dangerous line to take actually because, uh, you know, I am I'm firmly of the view that we need a multilateral set of rules right. uh, in order to counter the big guys. Yeah, the big guys don't need these uh, you know the multilateral uh, trading system, yeah, because they they have their economic might. They can do whatever, and they they've shown it uh, time and time again. Trump went on a unilateral kind of uh, uh, you know sort of uh, 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 this thing on uh, trip on increasing tariffs on right, a lot right, of products and right. did whatever, yeah. Uh, and uh, now uh, Biden is giving this kind of huge subsidies to the you know, semiconductor and whatever industries in order to uh, propel their uh, industrial policy. Yeah. Or anti-dumping duties from time uh, to time on that's various right. countries. So, yeah, so they can do whatever. Right. But it's the developing countries that, that they need that, that they need the WTO in order to resolve the disputes in, an, in a manner that doesn't hurt them. Now, you can always go and actually settle your scores with a big guy. Right. But the big guy is going to have have his have uh, have his or her way, yeah. So uh, that's that's given. That's the way, uh, you know. Wherever, whichever process you're talking about, um, uh, moves. So to think that you know, every at at all times, you know, India can just uh, have uh, these disputes resolved with the U.S. Uh, without affecting its own interests. Uh, that's a kind of a myth. You know, and, and that's a dangerous kind of a line to take. Right, but we keep saying that we've become very powerful and that India is now a global player. Uh, I mean, uh, so so fine, if we're a global no, player, then we're resolving our no, problems. No, that is, yeah, those who are actually talking about it must uh, look at the way the Americans make their policies. Whenever the Americans are defining their policy objectives, they say that, you know, we are actually doing these policies, including trade policy, uh, to benefit our, our businesses, our ranchers, workers, farmers, you know, nothing else. Right. Yeah. And, and that's how it should be. I think, you know, see, the point is that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sovereign, sovereign country um, and it's a democratic country. It's supposed, it has its mandate from its people. So it's supposed to actually look at, look after the interests of its own people. Yeah. It's not, never going to give it up. Yeah. Sure. So, so on on its own, it's never going to give up its own fundamental interests. Yeah. Only when you bring it out, you know, on a on a multilateral platform, and then you say that you know there are trade offs. You know, if you if you actually, we have all very often told the Americans that you just want to stick to your your way, then uh, you know there are others who will tell you that you can't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and and um, uh, this is this is all about trade offs so of course in while while agreeing to trade offs again we have not got a fair uh, bargain um, even in the wto we haven't got a fair bargain now it, it's impossible to think of a situation where india can actually bargain with the americans and get a fair deal yeah uh, and if it is claimed and if you don't know the details Surely something has happened that, that we don't know about. Yes, and that's true because there is there is a lack of transparency around these kind of arrangements as well. Where we that's don't right. Know, 
you know we know that we are under pressure to change our patents act right we are under pressure to change our policies we have been changing our policies in abc areas and we have been doing that so uh, you know it's be foolhardy to say that uh, you know we are sticking to our guns we are actually uh, been able to dictate terms to the americans and the americans have accepted exactly what we had wanted to tell them all right uh, dr dhar thank you thank you very much for watching news click i hope you enjoyed our discussion we'll be back with more such discussions in the future please keep watching and do subscribe to us on our youtube channel and follow us on facebook and our other social media thanks again